beneficial. And I want you to imagine if one day you could change the, how the world viewed your religion, your culture, and your moral beliefs. For 1.8 Muslims around the world, billion Muslims around the world, this day was September 11, 2001. Subse sub subsequently, after 9-11, according to Lila Abu Lughag, a, I'm getting better at um, credibility to that. <laughs> After 9-11, people in countries like the United States, the UK, and Canada were mo more motivated to find more information on Muslim women and were more hungry to have this information with them. This created the idea that the Western world needs to save these women. Unfortunately, this was also met with the idea that the Western world was more superior to the Muslim world. So from this, I pose the question, how do negative imaging and misinformation in American mass media lead to invalid and discriminative perceptions of the Muslim world in the eyes of Americans? 9-11 was a day of sorrow and remembrance in the United States, as it was the biggest um, terrorist attack on American soil. However, it also challenged the views of Muslims in the United States because of the actions of such a small group. This created a bias, or what is known as Islamophobia, or the irrational fear or aversion to or discrimination against Muslims or those who practice Islam. So, many Ameri this is this bias has been developing throughout history, throughout the history of conflict between Islam and the United States or the Western world itself. But it is also developed between the news media and entertainment media that was negative has a negative connotation on the on Muslims that was found after 9/11. Many Americans believe that the that their negative ideas against of Muslims is mostly due to the history of conflict between the Western world and the um, Muslim world, and having nothing to do with the American media or the misinformation within it. But negative imaging and misinformation in the Amer in American mass media leads to invalid and discriminative perceptions of Muslims in the eyes of Americans because of fake news, entertainment media, and the limited amount of valid information that Americans actually have on the Western, on the Muslim world. Now, when first talking about fake news, it's important to note that in the 20th century, fake news was used as false propaganda during times of war. This can be applied to this situation because as there are still troops in fighting in Afghanistan and Iraq, and the increase in the fake news in recent years, this proves that there is potentially fake news in the social media today. Today, this causes a huge problem because, according to um, a professor of writing, I mean, according to the Stanford. University History Education Group, students and college, high school and college students are sometimes unable to differentiate what is real or fake on online sources. Therefore, if they are exposed to fake news, this causes a huge problem because they will be able to make val realize which is valid or not, if it is valid or not valid. So from this, many have decided that, mus that the, in the government must censor um, social media sites for fake news coming into social media. But this poses another problem according to Joseph Juskinski, a professor of anthropo- of According to Juskinski, If 
fake news is eliminated from these online sources and social media, it can also unintentionally eliminate real news that is there. And without the real news, how, there will be, uh, the, it will cause a bigger problem in having this because many, if the sol there's a sole reliance on these online sources, they can be also exposed to fake news. But these, inval these valid sources will be gone as well. However, this is not the only solution because according to information professors of information technology at Drexel University, there are information technicians as well as librarians are able to provide access to valid information and are creating programs so that students will be able to find out and know the dangers of fake news and be able to realize it. And well, in order for these programs to be effective, there needs to be enforcement and funding from the government so that teens will be able to find validity and online sources. According to, in addition, when it comes to um, entertainment media in the United States, most, according to Michael uh, W. Suleiman, in American film, Muslims are often portrayed as unreasonable, primitive sex crazes, or violent terrorists, which can be also which can be displayed throughout the media. However. Some may argue, according to researchers in um, information technology, that part of the media, that this, that Suleiman's findings were written before 9-11, and that after 9-11, um, New York Times articles had a, higher increase in headline tone positivity towards Muslims. However, this is not the only, this was the only part of the media that found to have more positivity because after 9-11, there was a continuance in the way that Muslims were viewed negatively and, and this also, according to, now I'm gonna try it. <laughs> Okay. How did you handle the differing perspectives in order to reach a conclusion? So, I looked at um, many forms of the ways that Muslims were being viewed in the media to decide um, whether or not this that um, there could be a solution to. Um, getting rid of this negative connotation against Muslims. And um, in, this, in the end, by looking at multiple sources and looking at multiple perspectives that were against censoring in the media, as well as um, just an overall, um, just an overall, I came up with the conclusion that it's better to um, teach students about the dangers about um, the Muslim world and to educate them further on an understanding of the Muslim world as along with the dangers of fake news so that with a combination so that without not only they are being educated fully through their education but they will um, the fake news the danger of fake news will also be eliminated so it solves both problems. How did your conclusion respond to any of the other research or sources you examined? Can you repeat the question? How did your conclusion respond to any of the other research or sources you examined? So, some of the sources that I did not include in this talk more about fake news and how it was involvement and the 
while, while teaching the students about fake news and the dangers of it, it will not only apply to the situation of decreasing the negative connotation towards Muslims, but also apply to other situations involving fake news and invalid facts that can be found on social media. Because this also, because that was what I found in my research, that not this was also applying to other areas of the media.